right, so, no comes. The moment I kind of been dreading because we need to use the really big tools. Uh, so we're going to cut in the holes for uh, the wire pass through uh, to the underground uh, cable. Uh, so we're going to be doing uh, two or three holes, uh, I think, uh, actually three, uh, two holes for the uh, DC and AC cables and uh, one more hole for the 60 square mil ground wire which is going to come down here and uh, equalize everything with the potential of the literal ground outside. Uh, so for starts I'm going to drill some pilot holes with this uh, smaller 8mm, uh, 6mm actually, uh, SDS uh, bit and then hopefully I'm going to manage to somehow uh, make uh, the big thing fit while hold of a thing like this roughly. And I'm going to need some uh, glasses because I'm going to get rained on by uh, concrete. That's better. Let's do this. Absolutely beautiful. So, if we get inside now, we should have a hole. Okay, here's the moment of truth. Do we have a hole? We do have a hole. Right there, beautiful. So, now we can do a few more of these. Might take them, and we're not going to take them from the outside in actually because I don't think the uh, coating on the inside of the wall is going to take kindly to that, so I'm going to make another two in a nice neat triangle there, and uh, we'll be ready to install our wiring. And there are our finished holes with aluminium pipe installed. Uh, so, uh, everything went very smoothly, uh, so you can see we can see right into the battery room in there, except for through that one, which uh, still has my little rubber uh, support in it. Uh, I just took a, some uh, used to rubber wire insulation and put it in the end there because I uh, the holes were so tight I had to use a sledgehammer to just pound these in gently. Uh, and I tried to move it on the first one there to the left, and it got slightly deformed, and uh, the other ones did not. Uh, get that way with the uh, rubber in place, so that's all gone very well and we can now really see all the way in there poof, with a bit of excess glue uh, as well I used a lot of uh, industrial sealant to uh, just uh, basically lube the tubes up while going in uh, gonna use little to little on the first one so it didn't slide quite as well as it should have, but the other two, I just used a lot of it and they went in properly. It's, uh, as uh, Jamie Hartman once said, you can never have too much grease. Uh, and uh, the adhesive in this case is uh, going to grease it up while we put them in and seal them up once it dries. So this has gone excellent. I can feel some air flowing through there. We've got extra ventilation right now until we get the wires installed. Beautiful. Okay, so in one great big caffeine sugar rush, I have completed uh, the entirety of uh, the uh, uh, trench and uh, our aluminium pipes have set through the night. I'm assuming this adhesive is still a bit soft, but that's all right, we don't care. Uh, these are ready, uh, so we can start finally laying down uh, pipe and uh, grounding wire. So, uh, due to the way everything's wired up, uh, for solar panels uh, you usually run uh, two uh, completely individual uh, DC cables, six square mils, uh, and, and no ground, it's just two raw conductors. Uh, and we need to have ground going uh, very firmly to the panel rack that's going to be on top of a barn. 
uh, because if something goes wrong you don't want 800 volts DC in your panel rack and the roof of a barn that would be a bad day so I've had to go out and buy some uh, grinding wire this is a 16 square mil of copper with uh, nothing on it uh, I did not look at the price I don't want to know the price uh, but we're going to be putting this down in the trench before we put the pipe for the current carrying conductors and this is going to give a pretty decent ground connection for uh, the uh, panel rack and it's also going to uh, equal also the potential between the barn and the house it's going to be connected to the barn and the house uh, which, which is useful in case we have a lightning strike for example it uh, will help uh, dissipate any energy down into ground instead of it uh, jumping uh, into my conductors and going through my inverter and you know more ground always better so let's get a line <sighs> it's very cold and windy uh, but we are done for today so I took uh, an old copper pipe and bent it around the ground conductor there uh, and uh, as you can see it's going out of one end and uh, into the uh, inverter room on the other side uh, with uh, a few meters of uh, uh, slack in there and uh, on top of our ground conductor we've got our electrical tube which I've just uh, pulled a great big tangle of pull cord through so we've pretty much done uh, as far as uh, pulling stuff uh, uh, preparing to pull the uh, wiring is concerned I just used a vacuum cleaner to pull the pull cord through because the uh, stupid original pull cord of this uh, tube was broken so we have this to just catch the suction catch the suck and uh, we'll tape the hose to the end of the tube and we had just uh, a great big long vacuum cleaner hose to suck through so soon enough we're going to be pulling some uh, proper wires through I think I'm going to pull two solar string uh, sets of four six square mil uh, DC wires uh, and one uh, three times 2.5 square mil AC wire for uh, the AC uh, to a barn, two photo volts for the eight let's over there. But that's definitely not for tonight because I am freezing to death. We're continuing inside and uh, that right there is now what remains of the terrible uh, cable which was barely used down in the basement. Uh, so I've ripped it out, uh, just put a bit of tape on it because it's uh, still alive because I don't want to get inside the central. I have to take all of these fuses out in order to get there and you can be bothered, we'll just tape it up for the time being. So we'll remember not to get too intimate with that for the time being. Uh, and I've started working down uh, at the floor level. So uh, I've ripped out a couple of the old electrical tubes, uh, the one that the useless cable went through and another one which was just empty. And you can see one of my new tubes poking up through there. So we're gonna have two of those and probably one more small one going through. Uh, each of the big ones is going to take my 5 times 6 square mil uh, cable to and from the inverter and the small one's going to be carrying ethernet uh, down into, well, basically all the basement. I don't have a proper ethernet down there yet. Uh, so to get this done was uh, easier and harder than I thought. Uh, I had to just cut a bit more of a floor right here. They just drilled a few holes, one for each of these, and uh, I've just taken my multi tool and uh, bossed out a big square uh, so we can get all kinds of stuff through. And uh, we should have enough space for this one, another one next to it, if we squeeze everything together, and a small tube there somewhere. Uh, and uh, that's been a bit to work down uh, on the basement side as well. Uh, because here's the other end of the same a thing and I've actually had to take the SDS and just cut out a big rock which was there. Uh, it went super e <laughs> very much easier than I expected because uh, this concrete is pretty good actually the floor stuff uh, but there was just a big rock big bloody boulder right there which was uh, in between these guys so I took the big big boy uh, chisel on the SDS and just went at it and finally the entire rock just popped out and uh, we have a 
a great big hole there with all the capacity we need. It could have gone so much worse. So, moving away from there, swoosh, into the old uh, boiler room. Uh, I have started removing some of the old mains for uh, the uh, old wiring, which is no longer going to be uh, needed and which is very much in the way. So, uh, this is uh, the uh, heat pump wiring, a 5 times 2.5 square mil, which is uh, going to be removed once we get the new centrals installed. Uh, and uh, that's making way for a few holes. I'm going to take three 25mm holes there and uh, three 25mm holes there uh, to pull everything through. Uh, and uh, in the inverter heat pump room, I'm going to have to, uh, I think, take everything uh, back here behind around there because all of this piping is kind of, it's a bit tighter to the wiring than I'd like it to be. So we'll have to go around, but no problems for that at all. Uh, once we get through this room with its uh, lovely fireproof asbestos doors, uh, I think I'm going to be a bit cheeky because uh, the ones are of course going to come out of there and follow along this wall. And I could go through that corner, into that corner, around the wall there behind the big radiator, into that corner, crossing straight across the window, and coming out in the completely incorrect exposure level. That's better. Coming out in that corner and then uh, going over there. Uh, but that is uh, a bunch of cuts on the channel I'm going to use. It's going to cross it straight across the window and uh, it's a lot more work than just cutting straight across from that corner. Shwoof! Over there. Uh, I was originally planning on taking it uh, into the corner along the wall, uh, but uh, the main concern for that was uh, the height restriction. This is a very uh, shallow room, like it's two point for the barely 2.1 meters maybe. I'm 170 and I can touch the ceiling, so this is not a tall room. Uh, my main concern for taking it around was to, to prevent people bumping into it, because the other option was going through here, where just replacing this old crap. Uh, and here we actually have like the stairs coming down there, there's another room, there's the outer door. There's a lot of traffic in this general area where I'm standing, uh, and I don't want everyone to go bumping into that. But if we take it uh, basically above the radiator, it's going to be, you know, above the radiator, but who cares, that doesn't barely get 40 degrees warm. Uh, it's not going to be imposing a height restriction because it's, well, we, we already have a giant radiator that's, you know, 10 centimeters below where the uh, wiring channel is going to be. Uh, so I think that's just going to be the the tidiest way of going about it, and it saves me a ton of work just going straight across there. Uh, so, uh, really, the next step is going to be starting to take some holes in the walls there. Poof! We have holes in the wall, and a whole lot more. So, I set the goal for today to uh, have all the holes done, and uh, to have the wiring channels uh, for this room in place, which we do. So, uh, we previously had uh, this channel going all the way over here, but that was it. Uh, and I've now added this and the vertical one going up there, the one going across behind the heat pump there, and the final little stretch uh, above the uh, unsafety circuit breaker there, uh, which is uh, finally going to pass the wiring in through the holes to the next room. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of funkiness going on with these, uh, just because there's so much miscellaneous uh, wiring for the heat pump uh, going on, uh, since this room was never planned to be anything but I ha always have adored this uh, work of art. Whoever made this wiring loom, ah, they put some effort into it. It's beautiful, unrestrained.
Mm. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, because all of this is here, you know, the vis a vis ground uh, pipes that are getting out of the house, uh, the new channel ends kind of behind there. There's also a pipe going through the wall, which uh, uh, this uh, old solar panel wire is going through. So, wires are going to be a bit ugly around here. They're going to have to go either above or below the pipe and just kind of hover, you know, 15 centimeters to get to this piece of channel, which is also a bit funky. It's almost resting on the uh, pipes, but it's very, very close and it's super short and has two mounts. So, at least it's not going to go anywhere. It's also just going kind of over the unsafety switch wiring there, but that's no problem. These mains are uh, very deep, which is uh, good in uh, this uh, circumstance. Uh, so, uh, tomorrow, hopefully, going to either be outside working on more of the uh, outside wiring. I really need to get that done. Uh, and maybe uh, pulling more of a channel, since we basically have a clear path all the way from uh, the battery room uh, into the uh, central now. That's just a matter of installing the uh, remaining uh, wiring mounts, wiring wire ladders, whatever you call them, and uh, pulling the actual wire. And the wiring is going to be super easy, it's just two identical uh, five times six square mil fatty uh, wires, so no drama there at all.